cleaning rifles. It's a necessary evil, especially in the competition world. But if you're like me, you usually let stuff soak in there. You're really trying to get all the carbon, the copper out, whatever it is, and it always takes a lot of time. The people over at Bullet Central just sent me some of this Thorough Clean. Haven't really used it before. I'm gonna give it a try and see if maybe this can help reduce my time while getting my bore as clean as possible. Let's take a look. Before we get to the video, if you are interested in trying Thorough Clean after this, or maybe you already use it and you'd like to save 20%, go to Bullet Central and enter code CLEAN20 for a limited time and save 20% off all your Thorough Clean products. Let's get to the video and see how this stuff works. I've used other bore cleaners uh, for quite a while, and I've always thought that I've been pretty happy with them. Most of them do involve letting the whatever it is soak, whether it's carbon or copper cleaner or some combination. And that can take time. And when you're on the road, traveling, doing stuff like that, I have to admit the last thing that I wanna do is just leave a gun sitting while I go make dinner and then come back and clean some more and then come back and come back. And while it's an effective process, it's not really time consuming and it doesn't always get my bore back to the exact state that I'm looking for. And what I like to do is I like to have a really clean bore because for me, it's like a reset point. And what it allows me to do is know that when it looks like this, which is basically a clean bore, and you're gonna see it here in a minute, that, um, that my load is gonna perform like this. And I've done this process for a long time, but I've sort of, I don't know, found myself drifting a little bit, just a little bit less effort once in a while and a little, you know, okay, I'll let a little bit of the copper, a little bit of the carbon stay in. And I've seen the effects on target. So when they said that they would send me over some of this thorough clean to test out, I thought, why not? Uh, I am a big fan of IOSO. I use their brushes. I've used some of their other cleaners. And if you didn't know, thorough clean is made in partnership with IOSO. And it is not, and I've heard this before over the last few years since Thorough Clean came on the market, but it is not simply watered down IOSO paste. There is a little bit more to it. I don't know what it is, but uh, it is made to the specifications of Bullet Central. And I have talked to IOSO and they've said it is not watered down IOSO paste. So there is that for you. It is what Bullet Central calls the four C's, the complete carbon copper cleaning system. And they do claim that it does not take very long to get effective results on it. One thing to note that um, it just doesn't smell. Um, there's no odor, there's no harshness to it. And I have used it for the first time and I'm gonna show you the before and after here and explain why I didn't show you on camera. But uh, I had never used this until maybe an hour ago when I cleaned my gun before starting this video. And I've always had other chemicals or cleaners that seem like they never want to come off my fingers very well. And so I always find myself really cleaning and scrubbing my fingers really well. I can tell you I got both the Thorough Flush and the Thorough Clean on my fingers and didn't have any you know, negative feeling on them. They washed with soap and water very, very quickly. And uh, I actually cleaned my gun, washed my hands, went and had lunch and didn't have any problems with it. So I've been very happy with it, at least on cursory inspection there. Uh, from that aspect. It's a pretty simple process. They have the thorough flush and they have the actual bore cleaner. The thorough flush is gonna be sort of a prep and a follow up and use the bore cleaner in the middle. So you're gonna take a few patches, soak them. You're gonna run them through. I like to use, um, I use a combination of these, um, I think they're called Boresmith triangle patches. I can't remember, I don't have the bag, oh, bag around here too much, but um, I use these Boresmith uh, triangle patches. They work really well on brushes. They work really well on jags. Uh, they don't jam up and they've been my sort of go-to here for a while. And uh, you're going to push some of the thorough flush through. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a brush and you're going to put the thorough clean on it. Now I use the IOSO brushes. I think we've talked about that before. I really like the IOSO brushes, which is totally separate from all of this uh, because they are incredibly stiff. They are, they are about as stiff as you can get without having a bronze brush. And while, look, I don't care about using a bronze brush, I'm not gonna damage a barrel with it. I just don't like bronze brushes. They tend to wear out for me very quickly and I don't like having to constantly replace them. Uh, these IOSO brushes will last me a good long time. In fact, 
uh, I would say I get months out of an IOSO brush before I even see any diminished uh, scrubability with them, uh, even with previous solvents. I guess we'll see how it goes when with the thorough clean here, but I don't suspect it's going to be all that different. But you're going to load up your brush, um, you know, put some on there. I tend to push mine into the brush so that it doesn't all come out on a, um, a bore guide or something. So I like to get it in there and then the action of it going in and out is going to help it sort of spread out so that it continues to work in the barrel. So why did I clean my gun uh, ahead of time? Well, to be honest, my gun was nasty. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, or what it looked like coming back from Southwest Nationals last week. And I was, partly to my detriment, I was pretty lax in my cleaning. Now I went through and I cleaned a bunch, but I didn't have a bore scope with me. I wasn't visually inspecting my bore every time. And I did, you know, to be fair, probably lose track of exactly what I was doing in there. You know, there's any number of reasons and, and it's inexcusable from a competition standpoint, but it did happen. Here's what my bore looked like coming back after shooting it. Uh, I didn't clean it after I shot Sunday. So this is what it looked like coming back. Uh, take a look at this. We are now going down my shot barrel. So this barrel has been cleaned off and on, you know, probably I'd say at least four or five times. It's got uh, four, about six to 700 rounds on it. I don't have the numbers exactly in front of me, but it's definitely been cleaned every time I've shot it. And I've been using a different cleaning solution to do it. And here is what it looks like after, this was about 100 rounds give or take and I have not cleaned it since I shot it because I was saving it just to test out this stuff and you can see here here's the carbon ring and then we get into the barrel and you can see it's pretty filled up there's quite a bit of carbon in there we get further down I mean uh, copper you can see the copper veins in there lots of copper up here We'll go further down the barrel. That's about 10 inches down into the barrel here. You can see it's just really muddy looking. I mean, we're going to go all the way as far as I can go. This is roughly halfway down the barrel, so about 15 inches or so. And you can see just tons of copper, lots of carbon, pretty ugly. We're going to go follow the instructions and see exactly what that can do for this barrel to get it back to really what should be its proper shooting estate. Let's see what happens. So you can see, nasty. You almost can't see the lands and grooves. It, it's pretty, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty fouled up. And it was, I mean, that's about halfway down the barrel that you can see that nastiness. The instructions, and one of the reasons that I didn't want to waste a bunch of video time, is that in all fairness, these instructions are based on having a clean bore or a starting point where you would want to then clean repeatedly. Now I clean every time I shoot, whether it's 25 rounds or you know 100 rounds, I clean every time, but I wanted to make sure that I gave this a fair shake. So what I did, the instructions will tell you uh, to you know put a few things of, of the thorough flush and then put enough on a brush and scrub 10 to 15 times and then to see, you know, push a dry patch through and then you follow it up with the thorough flush to get it out and then a dry patch just to dry the barrel out. But it took, in all fairness, I counted my strokes. So I did the first 15, as it said. It got about the second half of the dirt out and it looked pretty good. And then, um, in fact, I'll tell you what, here's what we're gonna do. Cause I did put my bore scope down periodically. So here's what it looked like after 15 strokes. There's our carbon ring, and you can see the carbon ring actually got broken up fairly decently. You know, there's a little chunk right there, but that's not bad at all. Obviously, I've got some fire cracking and stuff, but you can see, see a little bit more there. If we go a little bit further in. Still looks a little wet in there. Definitely opened up a whole lot more though. Now, this barrel was particularly nasty because it came from Nationals. A little bit of carbon or a little bit of copper right there you can still see. 
and I would expect, you know, I don't, I don't always take a borescope. I, I didn't have a borescope with me this time. And I think that was honestly part of my problems is that my gun was obviously getting more fouled up than it should have been. This is still pretty, pretty dark. So that was from what you saw to simply a little bit of the thorough flush, scrubbing 15 times, and then uh, running a dry patch and throwing the camera down. Now you could see it was about half of this got pretty well cleaned, certainly not back to bare metal or anywhere close, but it definitely cleaned out the second half. First half still was incredibly nasty. It sort of got that initial layer of gunk out, but there was a lot of embedded stuff. So then I did the same thing again, ran the thorough clean. This time I scrubbed with a brush, only loaded it up once and I scrubbed 40 times. This is what it looked like after those 40 times. Wow, look at that. So it basically took out the entire carbon ring just a little bit of residual but that's nothing I mean like I would shoot that all day long and then look at that much much cleaner and that's only about eight inches in you can see there was a marked improvement, right? Like massive improvement. And again, this didn't take very long. This isn't letting anything soak. This was scrubbing, then flushing it out, seeing what it looked like, scrubbing again, flushing it out. Huge improvement over the 15 strokes. So we are at a total of what, 55 strokes now. It still wasn't really where I wanted it to be. So what I did is I did it one more time and I gave it 30 strokes. So that would be 15, then 40, 55, 30, so 85 strokes total. I think for the 15 or 20 minutes that I had invested in scrubbing it and then cleaning it each time, I think you're gonna be pretty impressed with what it looks like now. So here's what it looks like after 85 strokes, twice reapplying and obviously going through the process. Look at that. I mean, almost no carbon ring now. Barely any residual. What a difference. Wow. Okay. That extra 30 strokes. Massive. Massive dis difference here. And that's pretty much back to bare metal, which is really where it should have been as I was going through the week at Southwest Nationals. And to give you an idea, that's what it looked like when I went through nationals at the end of last year in October when I had much better success than I had this time. And it does matter. You know, it's, it's part of my process. I didn't follow my process. I suffered the results and I can own that. A couple things about it. One, it doesn't take a lot. Uh, I wouldn't slather the brush up. I put maybe, uh, I, I pressed in maybe the top quarter inch of the brush each time with it and uh, going through with the patches, it took maybe five or 10 patches to get it flushed out, and then a couple dry ones, and then I was good to go. Now, the important thing for me is now, how does this work to get me back to this point? So I'm gonna be shooting tonight, I'm gonna be taking this out, and I'm gonna show you tomorrow what the fouling looks like after. So I'm gonna shoot uh, about 40 something rounds, I don't remember the exact count, but it's gonna be somewhere in the, well, it's going to be 25 plus at least another 15 because I need to go um, do another little test. So about 40 rounds or so. I'll let you know tomorrow. But after 40 rounds, you're going to see what the fouling looks like. And then we're going to see just how quickly this system can get everything out of the barrel. One other thing to note, and I'm sure you, you noticed because I pointed it out in the videos as you went down the barrel, is how much the carbon ring just, boom, comes right out. And it's important to note, uh, I'm not hiding anything from anybody, but uh, this is a seven mil uh, IOSO brush. And this is a 30 caliber IOSO brush. This is what I scrub with. I don't scrub with a seven mil brush. I scrub with an oversized brush. One, because I still get effective cleaning, but by using a 30 cal, I actually get my carbon ring cleaned out at the same time. And I've used a 338 brush as well, and it, it does a great job too, but it, it can be a little bit big for some people. Um, I like using a 30 cal brush, so that's actually my preferred bore scrubbing technique there. Anyway, we're gonna take this out. We're gonna shoot it tonight, and uh, in case there's any questions, 
Uh, that way you know exactly what I'm starting with, bare metal basically. You'll see what the results are after shooting, and then you'll see what it looks like after cleaning. So I'm going to head out to the range. I'll see you in the morning. I'm back. It is now the following morning. And apparently I have a scratch on my scope. And uh, I've shot it. I put 25, 15, about 40 rounds. I think that's about what I said I was going to put through it. So it was, it was like 40, 41, something like that. Rounds through it. And 15 of them were uh, at 100 yards. And then 25 were at 600 yards. Not that that makes a huge difference. But just so you know, it was at two separate sessions. First thing we're going to do now, you saw how absolutely mirror clean that uh, barrel was before I shot. And now we are going to get in here. And I know I kind of get in your way doing this, so I'm doing my best. But let's uh, turn on video mode and start recording. And I'm kind of curious to see what it does look like. So, all right, so there's our carbon ring back. You remember that was gone. And that's a pretty chunky carbon ring. And you have to be careful with these carbon rings. Those will cause wild inaccuracies if you let them go unchecked. And then we've got, you can see the carbon and copper in here. Pretty well laced in. And we're going to go all the way in. And there's some car copper. Pretty decent copper coming in. Okay. And that gives us a pretty good idea. That gives us a pretty good idea of what we're looking at here. Let me just check something real quick. Okay. Make sure it recorded for me. Now, we're going to go ahead and follow their instructions. And I've got my little cup. Again, I like putting a cup uh, with the patches. Just that way, if I'm drizzling it or whatever, it gets caught in here and doesn't go all over my bench. It just makes life easy. We are going to grab our trusty rod. And I'm going to throw on the boresmith. Again, this is my triangle patches that I've talked about. And these... Are what we're going to be using for this. I'm going to just break them up now because it's easier to break them up and just kind of make a little pile in there when they are dry. And I'm just going to soak a little bit in here and we're going to get this barrel going. Oop. And the goal here is just to get, again, some wet patches down the barrel. I'm just going to do two of them. And the fact that the, so the Boresmith kit, when you get it, it also um, has this specially tapered brush. So when you are pushing patches, you are getting just a little bit of scrubbing action behind it there. And it helps, helps dig in that patch a little bit. And then we'll probably use the IOSO brushes just to clear it out when we're done. Because they're, they're going to fit just a little bit tighter. So in this case, I want it to be a little bit looser just so that it's depositing the liquid for us. And then we're going to go for a tighter when we want to get it out. We're going to use the 30 cal brush that I talked about yesterday. And we are going to put just a little bit. of this up here near the top. Okay. I'll go just that with the hair more. There we go. And I'm just going to push this in. And we're going to do, you know, roughly 15 to 20 strokes. I just want to see again, that's pretty much the instructions. Five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And I am going to go ahead and pull this through. get the majority of the gorp off there and then we want to run one dry patch so in this case I'm going to run a slightly oversized patch like I did yesterday just to really push it through and, and get any residual stuff out of there you can see that's a nasty 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 I like to clean my rod in between just to make sure that it's not transferring anything in there you know keeping it as clean as possible while I'm working and so now I'm going to run some of these thorough clean patches through here Yeah, it's definitely, definitely taking off some stuff there. And I, I don't have my other camera on today, but you can see it's still coming out pretty pretty gross and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run one of these slightly bigger patches just to give it a little extra pressure and clean it out it's one of the nice things about using whether you're using the boresmith brush or even like these IOSO brushes when you're using these triangle patches you can go a little bit bigger and get a little extra pressure and they're not going to get stuck in there Oh yeah, yeah, nice and tight. Okay, you know you're gonna get it out when it's like that. So now it's gone, it doesn't have any really, just a little bit of the black, it's, it's more just kind of a gray now. So I'll run whatever I have in here and then we'll put a couple, looks like I'll let a big one soak up whatever is left in this thing. And then we'll run some dry patches through and see what the bore scope shows us. And you have to remember when you're running this thorough flush, it's still doing some cleaning because it's getting the thorough clean out and um, still doing a little bit of scrubbing, obviously. Okay. So this will be our last wet patch and then we'll put a couple dry through it. All right, yeah, that's definitely looking good. Let's get a wet patch in there or a dry patch in there and then get our bore scope. Do, 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 do. Depends how wet this is. All right, looks like I need one more, one more dry patch. Pretty wet. That probably looked graceful on TV there. Do 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 do. So now it's just a just a little bit of gray where the bristles are running through the grooves there. 
So let's take a look and see what it looks like after just 20 passes with the thorough clean and subsequent patches with the thorough flush. So most of, oops, if you look, most of the carbon ring is gone. So I imagine another 20 scrubs or so will get that out. Pretty clean, all things considered, for only doing 20, 20 passes. And that's, I mean, that's just a few inches in. I kind of look at how much glare there is, you know, on the screen, and that kind of tells me what I'm really looking at here because even though you can see the carbon and, and a little bit of copper the reflectiveness tells me that it's really close and then obviously all the way in you can see it's already beautiful so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run a little bit more of the thorough clean and I bet you if I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 20 and then what that's gonna tell me because I don't really have a baseline with this stuff having never used it before um, that's going to tell me that if I go to a match or if I'm shooting and, and don't happen to have a bore scope that I know I'll be safe at, you know, whatever this is, if it ends up being 40, then it's 40. If it's 50 or 60, whatever it is, um, it'll be good. Go ahead and get a little bit of the thorough clean in there again to wet it up. I'm just gonna do one this time and then let's get a little bit of the thorough clean. I didn't put quite as much on this time. Three. I might have lost track, but it was basically 20 strokes on that one. And, I, and like I told you before, I normally use a 338 brush. Where did I put it? Right here. And uh, I'm going to try pushing through with that one this time. I think that for me, and, and again, I got this from a buddy, but I think the 338 tends to do a slightly better job at getting all of the carbon ring out as, as you're cleaning so that you don't have to go back in there and do it again. I used to have to go back in and clean it separately and I would always take like a carbon cleaner with me or eliminator or something like that for at matches to make sure I was getting the carbon ring out. But if this thing's getting my carbon ring out at the same time, one less thing to have to carry to a match. And I'm okay with that. I already travel with enough stuff. <laughs> I'm not putting very much in here. That's looking pretty clean. And you can feel when, when a barrel's clean, 
I talk about this with my friends, but when you run a dry patch down a clean barrel, it, it, it almost has like a warble to it because you're feeling everything that's clean and it kind of goes whoa, 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 whoa. If you're cleaning normally and it's dirty, it just goes whoosh, right through. But a nice clean barrel is going to be like whoa, 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 whoa. And then if you've ever uh, pushed uh, a rod through and you kind of get a uh, 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 like a jerkiness, that's carbon. I learned that one from Eric. And these are coming out nice, nice and clean. So I'm gonna run one more dry and then we will throw the scope down. And I suspect we will pretty much be at the end of this. I know it hasn't been necessarily the most riveting to watch, but I like to think this is gonna really help me keep on a rhythm. And my buddy Chris, has used this stuff for a long time. And I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I was just, uh, never took a look at it, but, um, I have to say, I, I'm actually pretty shocked at how quickly it just takes the barrel back to where I want it to be. Whoops. And let's see what it, so, so we, this is a total of 40 strokes. So carbon ring is almost gone now and much shinier in here. And it's possible I didn't put enough, like I'll have to kind of play with it and fine tune it to see if I can do less strokes with more cleaner at a time or just more strokes and kind of reload the brush every so often. I don't know. But, I mean, this is looking really good. Look at that. Ooh. So now I'm really just from about here. And if you look on the outside, so that's, you know, only the first nine inches or so. Well, maybe 10, I don't know, something, well, about there. So about the first, I mean, once you get rid of the chamber, it's, it's really only like maybe six inches that we're dealing with. But the fact that it's removing that carbon ring and just really quickly getting everything back. So I'm gonna hit this again. I'm not gonna bore you with doing it, but I'll do another 20 strokes. So I think my number is gonna be about 60. So if I had to, you know, basically do it blind without any kind of a bore scope to look, I think I would feel very confident that after shooting 40 to 80 rounds, somewhere 60 to 80 strokes, if I really want to be safe, I might just go 80 then. Uh, if it's been a longer match, shorter match, I might do 60. But I know somewhere in there is going to get me pretty darn close to completely reset. Obviously, I'd like to look at it with a bore scope. Not always possible. The other thing I'll show you is, and I should have shown you this before, but if you look at how clean that barrel was when I took it out last night and went and shot it, here is the actual target from you know, resetting my barrel and getting it perfectly clean. And I think, I think you'll be pretty shocked at uh, what it does here. And this is something Eric's taught me is you have to have, as I've said before, reset points. You have to know, okay, if my barrel is this clean, I have roughly this many rounds where I can trust whatever my load is. Plus when you're doing it this way and you're taking your barrel back down all the time, you don't have a lot of those barrel speed up issues because this is pretty darn close to initially when I throw a barrel on. So I'm able to get to a load much faster because I know I can trust that load further down the line since I am cleaning the barrel essentially back to bare metal, not 100%, but pretty darn close. And so you don't have all of that additional carbon buildup or any, any pressure rings in there where it's, it's causing any weird issues. So that is how I like it. Um, you know, I, I have to say, I, I am honestly shocked. I did not know what to expect. Uh, I figured it would be pretty good, but it definitely was easier to use than I expected. And maybe it's good for you. It might not be for everybody. I get that. Um, but it does look like it's a pretty good product. Uh, it does what it's going to do. 
And the only thing that I will say is I think for travel, I'll probably, you know, put some of that in some smaller, uh, I've got like some smaller little uh, travel bottles that I use and um, they, they seal down really well and um, just make it a little more compact because I don't need this much when I'm at a match. So I got to figure out exactly what kind of transportation I want to do with it. But uh, conceptually, I really like it. I don't feel like I used that much. So I've cleaned the gun super heavily and then lightly, I would say like this was kind of a light cleaning, even though it took it down almost to bare metal, but I really had to work to get it to that bare metal point before uh, because it was so baked in. But, um, you know, it, it didn't start all the way at the top to begin with. I don't know if I have one that's, this one hasn't been used. So, I mean, there really hasn't been too much used in it. So it feel like it's going to go a pretty long ways. Um, anyway, there is the thorough clean system. Uh, you know, I hope you like that. I hope you got to see at least maybe a different way to clean a barrel if that's of interest to you. As always, get out and shoot. Have a good one. We'll talk later.